Hello, I'm going to look at some examples on arithmetic and numbers. Let's try and do this sum of fractions. 1 and 2 thirds divided by 1 and 3 quarters. The first thing to do is to change these mixed numbers with, that means numbers with whole numbers and, and a fraction next to it into just fractions. So that would be we start with multiplying the denominator and the 1 there. So that gives 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2, that's 5. 5 over 3 divided by 1 and 3 quarter. To convert that, we multiply 4 by 1 and then add 3. Right, now the reason why we do that, why we multiply the 3 by the 1 is because when we see a fraction like this, some number over 3, that means we are thinking of dividing each, each whole number or each unit number into 3 parts. So I will think of the 1 there as being made up of 3 parts. So if there's a 2 there, for example, it would be 2 times 3, that would be 6 parts. So that's why I multiply the 1 by the 3 um, because it means there are 3 parts in the number here and then I would add the other 2 parts on top of the fraction. So that's the reason behind what, how we convert to these improper fractions. Improper fractions meaning just number over number without a whole number next to it. So once we have done that, we can do we can either multiply or divide them directly. So in this case, for example, if we have to divide by this fraction, the next step would be change the divide into a times. But if we change the divide into a times, we must change the fraction after it by making it upside down. So 7 over 4 must become 4 over 7. Right, so once we have this, then we can multiply directly the numerators, numbers on top, and the denominators, the numbers at the bottom. So on top, we would have 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 3 times 7, which is 21. And that is the answer to this sum. We have some numbers here, and the first question here is to write down all the prime numbers. So in this case, it would just be the 2 then. Right, prime numbers refers to just whole numbers. So when we look at this, we would uh, immediately exclude decimals and fractions like that. So I will just look at whole numbers 2, um, 8 and 81. Now in order for it to be a prime number, it must not have factors that are different from itself or 1, meaning 
The only way I can get this number by multiplying two numbers must be 1 times itself. So for example, 8 cannot be a prime number because 8 can be 1 times 8, but 8 can also be 2 times 4, for example. So there are more than two numbers that can multiply to give you the same number 8. So 8 is not a prime number, right? And 81 is also not a prime number because we can think of 81 to be, say, 9 times 9, or 81 to be 1 times 81. So this is where knowing your times table really helps. So that's what you need to do this question. You need the times table. That's the only prime number. The next question. We need to write down the cube number. What does a cube number mean? A cube number is a number that comes from taking a whole number and then taking the cube of the number. For example, 2 cubed is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 so 2 cubed or 8 is a cube number because it can come from taking a number and then taking the cube of that number right taking the cube of a whole number so 8 is a cube number so, if we look through this, again, it helps to know the times table really well. And also it helps to have done some exercises on um, cube numbers. So in this case, let's see, if, let's see if 81 is a cube number. Well, again, we would immediately exclude fractions and decimals because we are just talking about whole numbers here when we say cube number or prime number. So, just a 2. Now, 2 is not a cube number because 2 is just 1 times 2. It doesn't come from some whole number to the power of 3. Um, 8, right? We already know 8 is a cube number from this calculation. How about 81? Let's check that out. Can I write 81 as a cube of Three numbers. Now the quick way, if if possible, is to write it as a product of prime numbers. So let's have a look. 81 is actually 9 times 9, again from the times table, and 9 is 3 times 3. So we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now if you look at this, there are four factors of three, so it's actually three to the power of four. It's not three cubed. And because these are all the prime factors already, it's not possible to make up or find a whole number that will give 81 when you take the cube. So therefore, 81 is not a cube number. So that's out. So the only answer, only cube number here is eight. Okay, finally, we want to write down the irrational number. The irrational number is a number that can be written as a whole number divided by a whole number can't divide by zero, of course. So, for example, 1 over 3. That is a rational number. So, irrational number means a number that is not a rational number, or 
a number that cannot be written as a whole number divided by a whole number. So that's a rational number that's out. Now whole numbers are also out because for example 2 can be 2 over 1. Alright, 2 can be 2 over 1. So 2 over 1 is a rational number. So all the whole numbers are out. 2, 8, 81 are out. The fraction 1 third is out. Now we are left with these three. So let's have a look. If I have a decimal, if you have a decimal, um, not a recurring decimal, but just a decimal with a fixed number of places, now that is also a rational number because if I have a decimal like I'll look at this 0 0.83 I can always write it as a fraction because 0 0.83 is 83 over 100 so that's a rational number likewise for the 0 0.2 that's 2 over 10 so that leaves square root of 2 that's the obvious answer, assuming that there is an answer. Now, so actually, it is true that square root of 2 cannot be written as a whole number divided by a whole number. Unfortunately, it's a bit tricky to explain why, and I might leave that to another um, session. So for now, what we need to, if uh, you are taking a test or an exam, for example, a simple way to pick out irrational numbers is to memorize a few things. Now, what do we memorize? The first thing to memorize is that when you take the square root of a number, you know if uh, the, the number of a, is a perfect square, like square root of 4, then the answer is 2. That's the whole number. So the square root of 4 is 2, and that's a rational number. But if we take the square root of a prime number, like 2 or 3, or right, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, and so on, there is no, the answer is not a whole number. Okay, and if the square root of a number is not a whole number, it is definitely an irrational number. So that's a, a, a quick way to answer such a question. If you see a square root of a number, you check whether it is a perfect square. You check whether the answer is a whole number. Um, meaning that you, you try to find, maybe by trial and error, whether uh, uh, the square of a whole number will give that, that square root. Uh, the number in the square root. So if not, then it's a whole number. Sorry. If not, then the square root uh, of that number is a irrational number. And the easiest way to remember is that the square root of prime numbers are always irrational. So that's one thing to know. And the other thing to know is that pi pi is an irrational number. Alright, we must be careful that when we are um, younger, we would learn that pi is equal to 2 over 27. But it, it is important to understand that 2 over 27 is, a, is an approximate answer for pi. It is not exactly equal to pi, but it's a simple way, uh, a simple number, simple fraction that we can remember and that we can use to do uh, quick calculation uh, using pi. So, but actually pi is a very, can be written as a very long decimal that does not repeat itself, that keeps changing. So actually pi is only approximately equal to 2 over 27. So that's an irrational number. But it's, it is not, not within this list, so that's just an aside. Right. We'll stop here.